Here we are in Blender. I'm going to show a quick tutorial on how uh, you can create mods for your 3D printing. I'm in Blender 2.91, however, um, most recent versions should look very similar. So real quick, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys so that you can see the buttons that I pressed down in the bottom left-hand corner there. Um, so here we are. I just clicked off of that splash screen, and so we're going to press A and delete all of this because we need none of that. Next I'm going up to File and Import. I'm going to import an STL and I'm going to just import a ski from the ski ride so that we can use it for reference on the size of what we are building here. So if I press the period on the numpad it'll take us to the object that's been selected. So here you can see that we've got the ski here. As I zoom out, you'll notice that our view looks kind of off. Um, over here on the right hand side, this little eye drop or water drop look, if you look at your units, you'll see I'm on metric and a scale of one. And so you'll want yours to be the same so that you can follow along the same. Um, but you'll see that our view kind of has a fall off to it. So up here, I'm gonna press view and change the clip start and clip end. If you don't see that, you can press N on your keyboard to get that to pop up. So there's just some minor graphical glitches because of the scale that we're in. So here I'm going to change our clip start to 1 and I'm going to change the end to 5000. Press tab to go into the edit mode on that ski. So I've got the ski selected. I press tab, you'll see it's selected. Press A to make sure everything is selected. And then I'm going to press G to go ahead and move that ski over to the center of the world. I then pressed 1 on the numpad and I'm going to press R and 90 to rotate that ski 90 degrees so that it's facing up because as we imported it it came in on its side as that's how I've saved it to make it easier for printing. So now we have the ski on its side so we can begin creating our ski hook. You'll have to forgive that some of my audio is not going to perfectly match to the video. I found that when I had finished recording this that I was not recording my audio so this is all going to be voiceover. So I'm going to shift A to add and then down to reference image going to go to where I saved a reference image that I found off of Google and we import that in. You'll see that we can't see it so I press those two overlapping squares in the top right. That gives us kind of an x-ray view so that you can see that image that I have selected. So with that image selected we're going to press S to scale that and then G to grab and move it around and I'm going to do S to scale and G to grab and then R to rotate and just get this um, hook lined up to about how I want it to sit on this ski here. And now we can go ahead and begin modeling our ski hook. So shift A and then mesh and cube is what we're going to start with. And so then a little cube pops up there in the center. Now right now the cube is in object mode and we do not want to modify um, objects in object mode because that will mess with how things look when we 3D print them. that You pull it into your slicer and it'll be the wrong scale. So you press tab to go into edit mode and then you're able to edit the object without it affecting the way that the export happens. So I'm going to press G and move this cube over to our position here and then S to scale it. And I'm going to start grabbing these vertices which are these little dots that you see at the end of each of the lines and we're going to use those and we're going to grab um, each of those and move them around and I'm in this x-ray mode still so that you can grab both of those vertices if you are not in the x-ray mode there if it's turned off and you try to grab one like I show here it only grabs the front one it won't grab the back one and then you'll end up with distorted objects. So you gotta make sure you're in x-ray mode if you're going to be um, using the box select to grab things. So here I'm gonna grab these vertices and just get a general shape. Now I'm going to go a little bit big on this end and not follow the reference image because there's going to be a hole right there for our screw and we need enough material that that screw is going to fit through there. So then I'm going to continue grabbing these vertices and moving them around so that we can match our reference image. Now I've box selected this group here and I'm going to press E. E is going to extrude that and give us more vertices to work with. 
so I can grab those and then follow this shape more closely. I can then um, grab these new ones again and press E again and then G to move them around and I'm going to roughly follow the shape of the hook that we're trying to make. But I'm not going to try and follow it exact because we're going to fine tune that later on. Um, here I'm just showing that the box select option is in that top left corner there and so if you're not able to just uh, click and drag to box select you need to make sure you're selected up there in the top left corner. So again I'm just going to go ahead and and continue pressing E to extrude and, and move these vertices along to create the shape that we need for this hook. So here you can see that we've got the main shape of the hook created. It's not super pretty, but you can see the main shapes there. We need to make it a little bit wider. And uh, to do that, we can simply tab in and um, select all with A, and then S to scale, and then X, so that we scale only on the X axis, which will just make it wider. And you want to remember that you still need some space in there. You want it to be able to fit, so don't scale it until it completely touches the walls there. Now it's time to add a little more smoothness to this so we are going to select the little wrench on the right hand side there and choose our subdivision for our modifier and change our local viewport to 2 on that modifier and you'll see that smooths out all our parts you can see the original vertices that represent our shape and then you can see that the um, subdivided part does not follow our um, reference image anymore so now we can go back through and add more geometry to better tweak where our subdivided surface ends up. So I'm going to select the bevel here with that loop selected up there for that corner and I'm going to pull out on that little yellow circle. That's adding a bevel to that so it's doubled that and then with the mouse wheel you can add even more cuts to that and you'll see that it's tightening up that edge there. I can then uh, use the box select again to grab and move those vertices to better line up again with our reference image. Here's another good spot where the bevel is going to help tighten up and make that corner fit better. Again you can see here using the bevel modifier to tighten up those edges and make uh, the, uh, the geometry match just a little bit better to our reference image. And you can go as detailed as you'd like on this. Um, it's really up to how much time you would like to spend making everything match. Now here's a spot where I want to tighten up that corner but the bevel modifier won't uh, do that very well for us or the bevel operation. So instead what we're going to do is control R and what that does is it creates a loop cut and so wherever you put your mouse you'll see that these yellow lines are coming up so with that yellow line right there I'm gonna left click and that creates this cut and then I can slide that cut and you can see that it's tightening up that corner there so that we can make that uh, match our reference image closer Again, we don't want it to go too close right here because we still need to provide enough room for our screw to go through. So you can see here that now our sides are not uh, perfectly flat and we want them to be pretty flat so that they make printing uh, much easier. And so to fix that, we are going to go back out into object mode and over on the right hand side here we're going to apply our subdivision. So once we apply that subdivision, if we tab back into that object, you'll see a whole bunch of new geometry, a whole bunch of new vertices have been created. And so from here, we can go with our number pad 7 to the top view, go into our x-ray view, and we'll select all of that side there. And then we're going to press S to scale and X, and then 0, and that will flatten that side out for us. You'll notice that that only worked for one side of our object 
And to fix that, what we'll do real quick is we're going to grab everything on the other side of the object and we're just going to delete that. So we hit delete and then we want to just delete all the vertices there from our little pop-up and now that site is gone. So to bring it back, we will go over to our add modifier and we're going to add a mirror modifier. And that will bring that side back and now we only have to edit one side of this object and it will be mirrored to the other side. So we can go ahead and grab that side and press G and we'll stretch it back out so that it fits within that slot again. Next what we need to do is we need to cut the holes through this ski hook so that we can uh, use screws to attach it to the ski. And to do that we are going to use a boolean modifier. So first we need to do shift A and we're going to add a cylinder. The cylinder is what we're going to use to cut the holes. So that cylinder has been added there in the center. If we press tab we can see that there it is in the middle and uh, we need to make this cylinder the correct size for the screw hole that we need. So if we come up here to the top and we press this little drop down arrow we can go down to where it says measurement and select edge length. If we tick that little box, you'll see a bunch of measurements pop up. We want to change where it says 2M. Now in the scale that we're working for 3D printing, that's equivalent to two millimeters. And our screws are three millimeters. So we're going to scale so that 2M is about 2.95, um, which will be a good size for the screw to have a little bit of plastic to grab. So there we've got 2.95. Now that we have the diameter of our screw, we're going to scale by pressing S and we're going to press Z so that we're scaling just vertically to stretch this out and make it a longer screw basically that we're going to use to cut the holes in our part. Number pad one, we go to our front view and then we press R and 90 so that we rotate that 90 degrees so it's laying on its side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that edge length view off again and then pressing G we can go ahead and move that uh, cylinder to where we need to cut those holes. I'm going to go into wireframe view here which you can see up on the top right and in wireframe view then if we zoom in we can see where the holes are in the ski which we imported. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this um, cylinder that we've created and we're going to center that as best we can inside the hole that we can see on the ski. We're then also going to do a shift and D and that will duplicate this cylinder that we have and we're going to bring it up so that we can create a hole up top here as well. Again zooming in and using G to grab and just move it around so that it's fairly well centered within that hole there. We can go back to our normal view here you'll see that we've got those two cylinders placed um, where the screws would be. So next what we need to do is we're going to select our ski hook again. We're going to add a modifier. This time we're going to add a boolean modifier. It comes in default set to difference and that's exactly what we want to do. So then we grab this little eyedropper and with the eyedropper we can select those cylinders out here in the world or we can select them over in the hierarchy list. So I'm just going to click on it here in the world and now that boolean has been applied so we can go ahead and hide the cylinder in our hierarchy list and if we adjust our view now you can see that there's been a hole cut in our ski hook here and we can go ahead and hide the ski and we can even hide the image so that you can see that that hole has been cut all the way through our ski hook so there we have it now at this point the ski hook could be exported so to do that we would go file export and STL. We would then select the location in which we want to export it and you'll notice that when I went to export I had that ski hook selected. So here I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to do selection only. This way only that ski hook is exported. If you don't select selection only it will export everything. It'll export the cylinder and the ski and all of that. So you want to do um, selection only. And now if we go to our um, exported object there 
you can see I'm going to double click real quick and it's going to pull up in 3D Builder and there it is and when we import we want to import in millimeter and here is our ski hook now to make it easier for when you pull it into your slicer we're just going to quickly rotate this so you'll see I rotate it like this I'll go up to object and I'll hit settle do a little checkbox for settle and now that ski is laying flat on the build plate and that'll just make it so you don't have to rotate it when you go into your slicer and there we have it I hope you enjoyed this I'm sorry if it was too long-winded for you but hopefully that gives you an idea and helps you get started into creating some fun mods for the things that you like to 3d print